Good morning and welcome. This is the Sunday, August 16th service of Bethany Lutheran Church in Palmyra, New Jersey. This service will be online only. Jonathan Clifton will be providing the message. Next week, August 23rd, we will resume in-person services with online videos of the service. Good morning. The Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Truth, Lord, she said. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request has been granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Here ends the Gospel reading. Good morning. It's a great honor to be asked to speak to you this morning. And even though I can't be with you in person, isn't it amazing that we can all worship together electronically in this way? Today's gospel lesson is one of the most challenging stories in the New Testament. In fact, it makes us extremely uncomfortable to read it. It seems to be painting a completely different picture of Jesus than the one with which we are familiar. The Jesus we know says, love one another. 
love your friends love your enemies everyone in the whole world is our neighbor and when he told the story of the good samaritan the one person the one person who came back to offer help to an injured man was a samaritan member of a hated ethnic minority quite a message we are all equal and jesus spoke to beggars and jesus spoke to women it might surprise you to know that the traditional jewish blessing is when a man begins each morning by saying thank you O god that you've not made me a woman quite something that eh? at the time of jesus a woman owned nothing and she had no rights that's why there's so much in the new testament about looking after widows and orphans because if your husband died you had nothing women were not allowed to speak to men in public even if they were married to them and yet jesus spoke to women and ate meals with thieves beggars and the homeless and gave hope to the hopeless so the jesus that we know is teaching diversity and inclusion two thousand years ago which is why today's reading makes us so uncomfortable we see a jesus that we don't recognize a woman comes crying because her daughter is seriously ill and the disciples ignore her she's only a woman and then she starts shouting at them this is so embarrassing and they say to jesus send her away she's causing a disturbance but jesus does nothing finally he tells her he can't help her because she's not jewish like him and then he calls her a dog which sounds hateful if not a racial slur this is not the jesus that we know in fact over the centuries several theologians have put forward the proposal that this isn't part of matthew's gospel that this story either didn't happen or was added at a later date by someone else i don't believe this because it's found in other translations and early manuscripts and it also appears in mark's gospel we may prefer to make excuses for something that makes us uncomfortable but i believe this story should be here and that it should make us uncomfortable because we can never change and grow without facing the uncomfortable realities of life i don't have all the answers but this is what occurs to me when i read this passage again this morning it's a hard thing for us to take in but jesus did not come to start a new religion called christianity with organs playing and choirs singing and stained glass and everything that we recognize as christian jesus was jewish and he came to lead god's chosen people into a new covenant he himself said i've not come to destroy the law but to fulfill it so first he's preaching this new message to the jews and then to the gentiles the non-jews jesus was the long-awaited jewish messiah and his disciples certainly thought he had come to save god's chosen people the jews anyway just prior to the event we read about this morning uh, jesus had been preaching and teaching and healing jews and he needed a break a rest from all the crowds who followed him so jesus withdrew to a district where he would not be under any pressure to perform perhaps he would have some time to himself so he went off to tyre and sidon which were non-jewish areas gentile regions a place where they wouldn't know this jewish preacher and perhaps he would be left alone but remember the disciples were ordinary folks they weren't worldly men they hadn't traveled widely so they would be out of their comfort zone this is bandit country 
all their safety nets as Jews are removed here. They were amongst Gentiles, with whom they had very little in common, and they probably felt nervous and agitated by being in such strange surroundings among these foreigners who were different. And as it turned out, Jesus and his disciples were not going to get any rest, because in fact someone did recognize him. We read in verse 22 that a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started demanding Jesus help her daughter who was very ill. So you see the levels of discomfort rise even more. Here they are in this foreign region, outside of their physical comfort zones, and a woman comes after them pleading for help for her daughter. And not a Jew, but a Gentile. And not a man, but a woman. Remember, no self-respecting woman would talk to a man in public. The only kind of woman who might talk to a man would be a prostitute. And this was not just a woman, this was a Gentile woman, a foreigner, a different race. A Gentile woman talking to a Jewish man? This is deeply embarrassing and uncomfortable. And so the disciples don't say anything. Nobody says anything. And then the woman started shouting at Jesus. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody starts complaining or making a fuss? It's embarrassing, isn't it? I was at my doctor's this week and a delivery man parked right in the middle of the parking lot. And some of the patients couldn't leave. They couldn't get their cars out. And one man asked him quite politely if he could just move forward a foot. And he turned around and started shouting and cursing at him. I thought he was going to start a fight. And we were all outside, you see, because of the virus. We can't wait in the waiting room. We wait outside in our cars, or if it's a nice day, as it was, uh, at social distance around the parking lot. So we were all outside watching this. And I noticed that people started pretending to read their books or looking the other way. It was so embarrassing. An event was happening that they didn't want to be part of. Well, this is how it was for the disciples. They're in a foreign territory and this woman starts shouting at Jesus. So the disciples said to Jesus, look, tell her to go away. She's causing a disturbance. And what is Jesus' response? Nothing. He does absolutely nothing. Verse 23 confirms it, confirms it for us. It says, he did not answer her at all. How could Jesus appear so indifferent to a woman screaming that her daughter is ill? We don't know, but the disciples obviously thought that Jesus can't be bothered with people who are outside of his race and religion. In verse 23 it goes on, And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And what does Jesus say to her? No, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, I'm here only to help Jewish people. It might seem that he's agreeing with them. But I think he isn't agreeing with them at all. If you think about it, if he had agreed with their racist, exclusive position, he would have done what they asked and sent the woman away. But he doesn't do that. What Jesus does is to start talking to her. He begins a dialogue. He starts a conversation. He says something that she has to respond to. We can argue, we can protest, we can shout back, we can rebel, or we can engage others in conversation, which means listening to each other and finding out what it is we have in common. And that's why the conversation on race and justice that Elissa and Casey and several other people started in our church last week, and why it's so important, and why it's important that it doesn't continue and become a protest or a sounding board or an angry crowd, but it should remain 
a conversation over shared food by people who want to move closer together and not further apart. So Jesus engaged her in conversation, saying quite truthfully, I've come first to save Jewish people. And then he said, Is it fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs? This might not sound like a very friendly conversation, but it's important to know if you look it up, the word used for dogs here in their language doesn't mean fierce wild animals, it means pets or puppies, something lovable. If you have pets, you know that they are part of your family. Sometimes people have those stickers. Uh, you put them in the back window of your car. There's a man and a woman, a husband and wife, two or three children, two cats or a dog. And what it says is, this is our family. Except, of course, in one way, pets are not your family. They don't do the dishes for you or change your library books or sit at the table using a knife and fork. Although people who have dogs tell me how convenient it is if you spill some food to have it immediately licked up for you. And this is what the woman responds. Jesus says playfully that she is part of the human family, but not completely his family, like a pet is family and isn't. The pet isn't really entitled to all the family privileges. And she says, well, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She's saying, do you not even have a crumb of comfort for me? Surely there's enough to go round. The abundance of God transcends all racial, ethnic and gender boundaries here. There is more than enough to go round. But notice the woman had not come to Jesus because she wanted to be his follower or because she was prepared to give up her heritage and become Jewish. No, culturally, she remained exactly where she was and asked Jesus to reach out into her cultural setting and meet her there. You see, the temptation for us is to expect others to come and join us, but to join us on our terms, not theirs. We want new people in church but we want people who are just like us. And that's why there seems to be controversial teaching in this story. Look at Jesus' response in verse 28. Woman, how great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And he healed her daughter. You know, there are only two people in all of the New Testament about whom Jesus says, how great is your faith? One is the mother in today's reading, and the other is the Roman centurion. And neither of them were Jewish, but Gentiles. Different religion, different backgrounds, different culture. The other thing I noticed, we see this woman's persistence, don't we? The woman comes to Jesus for help, and when she doesn't get the response that she wants, she keeps on asking Jesus until she gets it. To see that her need was met and that her daughter was healed, this woman had to overcome many obstacles. People ignoring her, people seeming to make fun of her. It seemed that she met resistance at every turn, and yet she persisted until she achieved her goal. Remember Jesus said, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So let us continue to have conversations, however difficult they may be at first. Let us be humble and let us be persistent in seeking that infinite bounty that only God can provide for all of us, whoever we are. Amen.